Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ijoma Fab. So today I'll be taking you on how to make a basket with you. So I'll be making use of this half length pattern. So I've gone ahead to add a half inch on the shoulder. So this will serve as the shoulder allowance. And the wideness of the neck is 4 inches and the depth is also 4 inches. So the next thing I need to do now is determine the length of the yoke I want to make use of. So the length of the yoke I want to make use of will be 6 inches. So from this starting point here, I'll be marking 6 inches downwards. So after marking, the next thing I'm going to do now is to connect with a straight line. The next thing I'm going to do is to label here as yoke. So we now have our yoke for the basket width. The next thing I'm going to do now is to cut this out. So the next thing now is to separate the yoke. So I'll be cutting through this line. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to transfer this to my fabric. But I'll be adding a half inch at this part here for sewing allowance. So for the yoke, I'll be transferring this yoke to another pattern paper. So the pattern paper now should be on fold. So I'll be placing the yoke this way on the pattern paper. So the pattern is on fold. So the next thing I'm also going to do now is to trace this all out and also add a half inch at the bottom here for sewing allowance. For my back pattern, I also want to make use of a basket weave yoke. So I've also gone ahead to draft out the pattern. So I added a half inch like I did for the front. This is going to be for uh, joining allowance at the shoulder. And at the zipper allowance here, I went inward by half of an inch. So this should take care of the zipper board at the zip allowance. For the neckline, I also use a width of 4 inches. So the depth of this neckline is 6 inches. So the yoke is also going to be 6 inches. So I'm using this particular neckline just to eliminate the zipper allowance here. So I don't want a zipper allowance on the yoke. So this will help me eliminate bulkiness so the next thing i'm also going to do like i did for the front is to take my six inches length and connect with a straight line so i'm also going to label here yoke just like i did for the front so the next thing i'm going to do now is to cut this out So after separating the yoke, the next thing I'm going to do now is to transfer this panel on my fabric and I'll be adding a half inch like I did for the front at the top here for sewing allowance. So for the yoke, I'll also be transferring like I did for the front pattern and I'll be adding a half inch at the bottom here for sewing allowance. So after transferring the back yoke, this is how it looks like. So I have two panels for the back. So I have the front and the back panels cut out here. I also went ahead to cut out the Ankara fabric and also the lining piece. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to take in the dart on both panels. So I'll take in the dart on the Ankara fabric and also on the lining piece. So I have my front yoke here, which I'll be making use of. I'll be drawing a slanted line, which is going to serve as a guide. So the distance between the lines is going to be one inch. So after drawing the slanted line, the next thing to do now is to draw the opposite of the slanted line. And the distance also will be one inch. So after drawing my lines, the next thing I'll be doing now is to do the same thing to the back panel. So to make the basket weave, you'll be needing some straps of fabric. So I have these straps here which I already cut out. So you're going to cut as much as you'll be needing. 
So I have this, which is length 45 inches, and the width I use is one and a half inches. So I'll be showing you an example of how I made this strap. So I have this here, which I cut out. So this is on straight cut. So I folded in this way and folded this way again. Then I folded it into two, just like this. So after folding, I went ahead to run a stitch. So if you want yours to be wider than this, you can go ahead and make it 2 inches wide. So to sew, you'll be placing it like this on the pattern paper and sew it down. So you'll be sewing one direction first before we move to the other direction. So when we want to sew, you're going to place it in the middle of the line this way. So you're going to make sure you have a little coming out, a little strap this way. Now you're going to sew it down. And after sewing it down, when you want to cut out, don't cut from the front this way. So the best way to cut is to turn it this way. Turn it to the back and cut. This way you'll be more accurate. So you're going to place it again this way, just like I did the first time. In the middle of the line and making sure it comes out a bit so the next thing you're going to do now is to sew it down so once I'm done the next thing I'm going to do now is to sew the opposite lines so I'm going to place it this way and sew it down this way again and I'll do that till I am done sewing everything so after sewing this is how the front looks like so these are the excesses. So to cut out the excesses, you'll be turning it this way from the back and you cut it all out. So after that, the next thing, this is how the back also looks like. So I did the same thing I did for the front. I also did it to the back. So to pipe the neck for the back, I have this strap here, which is on straight cut. So this is one and a half inches width. So I'll be using this to turn the back neckline. So I'm going to place it this way and sew it up. And I'll be turning it after sewing to the other way and finish up the back neckline. So for the front, I'll be using this piece of strap, which is also one and a half inches. So I'm going to sew, because this is a curve, this is on bias cut. So because it's a curve, I cut this on bias cut. So I'm going to place it this way, just like I'm doing, and I will sew it gently. So after sewing, the next thing to do now is to take it inwards. So I'm going to take it like this. I'll be folding it this way first. Then I'll fold it the second time again. So I'm going to gently do this. I'll keep doing it round. So you're going to take your time because this is a curve. So I'm going to sew it to this end. So after sewing, this is how neat it's looking like. So this is the front of it. So the next thing to do now is to finish up the back. So guys, after sewing the neckline, the next thing I'm going to do now is to introduce the yoke. So this is how it's supposed to be looking. So I'm going to place the yoke this way, right side of the yoke facing the right side of the half length top. Now I'm going to introduce the lining. So the right side of the lining also facing the right side of the top. And I'll be sewing up the neckline with my sewing allowance, which is half of an inch. So I'm doing the same thing also to the back. I'm going to place the basket weave yoke this way. So minding the zipper. So this is the lining. I'm also going to place it on top. The right side facing the right side of the fabric. And I'll go sew up the neckline with half of an inch. So guys, after sewing, this is what I have. I've also gone ahead to join the back and the front at the shoulder. So after joining them at the shoulder and the side, this is how it looks like. So I joined the shoulder and also piped the shoulder individually. So I piped it just like I did for the neckline. So after piping individually, the next thing you do now is to sew it down so that it rests very well. So this is how it looks like after sewing it down. 
so i've already piped this and also sewn it down so this is how my blouse looks like so the next thing to do now is to fix the sleeve before i'll remove the paper so after fixing the sleeve i can now remove the paper from the blouse so after removing the paper this is how a basket weave yoke looks like so this is the front and this is also the back so this is one side of the back and this is the other side of the back so you can see how neat this looks like so guys i hope this video was helpful to someone thank you so much for watching please like share and subscribe